You are about to listen to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast, hosted by Craig Forrestal. Find Craig on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy. The That Sports Guys podcast is proudly featured by NFL Draft Diamonds, your draft coverage king. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some football talk. Hello and welcome to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. I am Craig Forrestal. You may know me from Twitter as at that underscore sports underscore guy. But today it is all about Stephen F. Austin product and defensive back Alizé Ward. Alizé, what's good with you, my guy? What's up, boss man? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes to uh, make time. I know before we got on, we were talking about our kids and how the time change has been rough. So, uh, yeah, I, I thank you for toughing it out here with me. We're coming up on that, uh, you know, midnight hour for us parents here. So thank you. I appreciate it, Alizé. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's nothing but a thing, <laughs> boss, man. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's go back and let's get to where it all started with you. Your hometown, San Diego, but you eventually made your way to Texas and grew up a little bit out there. So what was it like in Cali? And then how did you find your way to Texas? Ah, California, that's that's one heck of a place, man. That's uh, I've had a lot of, you know, I've had a lot of experiences in California, born and raised. Um, it's lovely, obviously. It's, you know, it's a place somewhere someone always wants to go to. Who does want to go to California, you know? So it's, it's a blessing to be able to be from there. But I end up in Texas uh, just through family issues, really. Um, it, it is expensive out there in California. And my mom raised five kids by herself, me and my four siblings. So it got, things eventually got, you know, too tough. So things were able to be, done in texas financially so i think we, that was the best move so we had to make that move and now you grew up in california and texas those are two hotbeds when it comes to football talent so were you a football only kid growing up or did you play other sports too no nah, i was a foot i was a strictly football honestly i wish i wish i played other sports as well but football was it for me that was it and now let's go ahead and let's move over to your high school days a little bit. You played at Prime Prep. And for those that do not know, that is where Deion Sanders was a head coach. So you played for Deion Sanders, and one of your teammates was James Proche, now with the Baltimore Ravens. Alizé, how good was that team? Oh, man, we were we had some dogs, boss, man. We had some, some, some talent over there. We were just – we weren't underlooked, but our the school was just so new that people didn't want to give us the opportunity to play against the bigger schools, you know. So mm-hmm. we didn't get that, you know. But other than that, it was – we had some talent, man. I think that was really – we could have beat a, a lot of these the, – the, the, the best Texas teams out in 2015, 2016. 20, 2014, 2014, 2015, sorry. And now I want to slide on over and I've never met Deion Sanders. I've never met coach prime. So Alizé, I'm going to ask you, what was it like playing for Deion Sanders in high school? It was, uh, at first it was like, a I was starstruck the first time I met him, honestly, but eventually, you know, it just, it, 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 it became a normal, you know, so it just, it just became my coach. And, you know, we got to do a lot of things that an average high school, football team didn't get to do just off you know who he was so it was a a blessing to be able to play for him and now did coach prime ever come out on the field and did he ever give anyone a little taste just to show you guys that he still had it he take any reps oh yeah he coach prime is very hands-on I I can give him that that man is is hands-on it's his way or no way and if he don't like the way you're doing it he's gonna show you or get somebody to do it but that man he's he's strictly business And now I want to go ahead and I want to talk to you a little bit about the recruiting process, Alizé. So you settled on Stephen F. Austin, but before you made your final decision, who were some of the other schools that were looking at you? And I saw you played a lot of running back in high school. So were some schools coming after you as a running back? Yeah, uh, I had I had pretty much Southland Conference. There was a few schools I didn't have, but pretty much had Southland Conference. I had Illinois State. I was actually 
verbally committed to Illinois State before Stephen F. Austin, but the distance became, you know, I found out I was having my first son. So that that became a burden. The distance kind of became a burden. Mm-hmm. So that that also had a lot to do with why I chose Stephen F. Austin, the distance, you know, so I can be close to my family. Like I said, from coming from California to Texas, I didn't want to go from Texas to Chicago or, you know, so mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. try to keep everything close because we were already far, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And now, Alizé, I want to move over to some of your accomplishments on the field. So I'm going to go through your accomplishments and some stats for some of our listeners that may not be familiar. And then I'll get into my question. In 2017, you were named second team all Southland Conference. You were named the FCS Defensive Player of the Week. And you finished the season with 75 total tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, half a sack, four interceptions, 10 breakups, and then you also added 29 kick returns for 726 yards. And then you followed it up again in 2018 with another second team all conference selection, 58 tackles, two and a half for loss, one interception, another two pass breakups, and then added 11 kick returns for 254 yards. Alize, so we can see that you have a nose for the football and you have some versatility and explosiveness in that kick return ability as well. But what would you tell us about your game? If you were going to give us, a, excuse me, a scouting report on yourself, what would it say? Uh, that, that man, you can feel his presence on the field at all times. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You're going to feel when Alize Ward is on the field. Um, he, I'm, I'm, like you said, a ball hawk. I, I just have a nose for the football. I just, I just, just I'm just a go getter, boss man. I just feel like if someone's in my way, the shit, if I gotta knock him out to get the ball, I mean that's what I gotta do. It's just, it's just an instinct. Like I can't even describe it. Really, it's just, it was a God. God gave me a disability, so I'm just showing and blessed to do what I do. And now I want to ask you about a highlight play against Incarnate Word that made ESPN and ultimately SportsCenter's top plays. You had a game-winning interception return. Can you relive that play for us? And how did you find out that it made it onto SportsCenter? Uh, Really, uh, through my mom has sent me a link through social media. That's how I found out. I had no idea until the next morning. And that's when... I just seen it going viral. It was on a couple, you know, viral pages, but I was shook. I was like, what? (laughs) And now it was a 70 yard interception return. Incarnate word had ran a flea flicker as time was expiring. You took it from the 30, you ran it, you did what they always tell you to do, you know, get to the hash, then get to the outside numbers and then hit the sideline. So you did all that as a return man. And then you got a couple of key blocks that sprung you towards the end. You hurdled the last defender and then you dove in getting the nose of the ball across the end zone before one of the other uh, players was coming to try and chase you down. So it was an acrobatic play. Alizé, as you were scanning the field, what were you looking for? What were your eyes telling you? Uh instincts i really i was following the pur- purple following the purple that game we were in all purple so just follow the purple so uh, like you said them key blocks i had my linebacker teddy Britton. he had two he had two blocks on the same play that led me to the end zone he bumped one guy and then he bl- knocked the dude off his feet the uh, that's the dude i hurdled before i hurdled into the end zone but without just following the purple, that's all I was doing, following the purple and, and, and God's whatever, whichever way God led. And then in 2019, you were named as a preseason All-American, but then you faced a little bit of adversity as you sustained a knee injury. Alizé, take us through the injury in the rehab process for that. Um, yeah, going through injuries, it's a very tough process mentally. Because uh, me growing up, like I said, I played football my, since I've been able to play football. That's the only thing, only sport I've ever played. So it being taken away from me at the snap of a finger, my senior season, you know, that that was a lot on me mentally more than it was physically. So once I overcame it, you know, the mental adversity, then, be, then the physical, that's when that came apart. But once I got myself together mentally, the physical part, that that 
that came naturally. It's just, you know, working hard, staying focused, and just staying, staying committed, knowing what I want. And then after you finish up that, that rehab process for the knee injury, the pandemic hits. How did the pandemic change your plans and where are you currently? Um, the pandemic had a lot to do with it. There was supposed to be a supplementary draft that I was possibly going to enter at that time because coming off my injury, I didn't know, like, there was some false paperwork. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you exactly. I still can't tell you what's going on with my situation, honestly. But I've talked to every resource that I could think of at the top of my head and all my contacts, all my old coaches. I've contacted them, and they all said something about, 10 semester rule but it just none of it makes sense to me it's just I, I've only played three college seasons so I just don't understand how I don't have my final season but as of right now I'm just training staying committed that I know I'm gonna get my shot I know one door closed but another one's gonna open so I'm just staying focused staying committed because I know I'm gonna get my shot and then, Alize, what does football mean to you? How are you different from other guys? What are your goals within the game? Just overall, what does the game mean to you? Uh, the game means a lot. It, it To some people, it may just be a ball being thrown in the air or someone tagging somebody, but that's honestly like one of the biggest stress relievers to me, just being able to go out there and do damage to somebody without getting in trouble with the police, without, you know, without putting your name in any jeopardy. You're all go you're going out there to smash somebody else and you getting praised for it. Like it's like who like come on now. It's like who wouldn't want that? It's just, you know, it's just a beautiful game. It's beautiful. It's so much technique to it. It's so much mental, like it's a lot to it that it, it makes you develop as a man that people that don't play sports, don't see. So just football has done a lot for me. It made me grow up. It's it's helped me see a lot. And I also know what what it what it's like to not have football. So I, I get to see both sides. So it's just different. It's just different. It means a lot to me. I need to get back out there. And like you said, you were exploring the supplemental draft possibly, and you have shown up on NFL radars. <clears throat> One person specifically who has mentioned you is – Hall of Fame executive Gil Brandt, he mentioned you on Twitter. When you hear things like that, how do you stay focused? Um, it's just motivation. Motivation, you know, you don't have to go to the biggest school. You don't have to make the most plays. As long as you're doing your job and staying focused and staying committed, you're going to be seen one way or another. So that's just that's the biggest thing I got out of it, just staying focused and just just worry about me and my team. You know, don't I don't have to worry about going to LSU or Alabama. Just focus on what in my circle, you know, I'm I'm gonna be seen one way or another. So just stay focused. And now Alize, I want to transition from the football based questions and I want to go to some questions off the field for you. You ready for them? Yes, sir. All right. So the first question I have for you, you're stuck on an island. And you can pick one person as your survival partner, and you can pick one weapon. What are you taking? I'm definitely gonna take my girl. She's definitely gonna be with me. And a weapon? Ah, <sighs> one weapon. Do okay. Ah, uh, something that can catch food, obviously. So. Some type of some type of gun. I don't know, something I can hunt with. A rifle, some type of hunt rifle. All right. And now let's go ahead and let's go with something where you're not stuck on an island, but this time you win a dream vacation. So Alize, if you win a dream vacation, you can go anywhere in the world. Where are you going? Dubai. Oh, okay. Why why Dubai? Dubai is different. I I it's it Dubai. I want to go places where I can learn different things. I don't want to go somewhere where I already, you know, I want to go mm -hmm. somewhere the culture is different and, and that's somewhere where I can find that. So, and there's a lot of money in Dubai. Who doesn't want to be around money? What's a little known fact about you? What's a little known fact about Alize Ward? 
Uh, a known fact. <laughs> Alize Ward is Yeah, that's it. That's a I'm a noticeable guy. I don't know if you've seen I have a lot of tattoo art. That's just the first thing that comes to my head. I'm I'm a noticeable person. I stand out. What's the best advice you ever received? Um, don't worry about things that you can't control. And the final question, if you could give or donate $1 million to any social cause or charity, what would it be? Uh, breast cancer, some type of breast cancer awareness. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Alizé Ward, Stephen F. Austin product. Pay attention for his name. Like he said, he is just waiting for his chance at the next level. And when it comes, he has the athletic ability to contribute to an NFL team. Ladies and gentlemen, for Alizé Ward, I am Craig Forrestal. Until next time, stay safe and be easy. Hey everybody, Craig Forstall. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy to catch all the latest updates and podcast episodes. Until next time, stay safe and be easy.